The long phone trip from Greenville to Atlanta begins this morning with Farmville, 919753. This is another Carolina telephone step. The tone plant is kind of unique. I don't think I've heard another one like this anywhere, although I've got a lot of tapes. May turn out I'm wrong about that, but I think this is unique. Here's a local ringing number. If you listen real carefully after I dial the second digit, you'll hear some other selectors moving, and that's the actual acoustic sound of the selectors being picked up through the rack and transferred to our call by the microphonics of relays. Here's another intra-office call, which appears to be in a hunt group. I don't know how many lines this business has, but right after I dial the last digit, there's a subtle hunting noise before it rings. There are many manufacturers of step, and there are different types of hunting selectors, and I think we may have just caught one of the selectors that this particular manufacturer, or whatever it is, makes when it hunts to find an idle line in a group. I'll dial my own number now to get the local busy signal. All the numbers ending in 99 go to a supervision test. Here's an actual vacant number in Farmville within a working connector group. The real ring starts and it's very quickly tripped. There's sort of a little squeak noise when the ring stops. And then we get a recording that's right in this building. Sorry, you have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. This announcement machine plays once and then it sounds like it's getting stuck because the machine is still on, but the recording isn't repeating. I didn't hang on long enough to see if it actually does repeat after many minutes. I would guess it didn't. 
Now here's getting a similar sounding recording in Farmville, in this case the vacant level recording, through the callback circuit, and I superimpose a busy tone. But this sounds like a different announcement machine, because the EQ is different and this one repeats, but it has the exact same recording on it. Apparently they have a master tape of the girl doing the announcement, so they don't have to bring her into the CO every time they want to redo the recording. You have reached a number that has been disconnected. There is no longer service. If you feel you have reached this region in error, please check the number or try your call again. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. We're sorry. You have. Here's a blocked level. After we get the reorder on the 11th terminal, you can hear another caller coming into it and dialing over it. Farmville does have local calling to other communities. One of them has been local for a long time, Fountain. The other one is Greenville, which was added to the local calling area in the 1970s. Let's call Fountain first. I'll dial a number ending in 99 in an attempt to get either a test line or a busy signal. The office code is 749. The 7 and the 4 were absorbed. The 9 cut into this trunk, which is a wire trunk. It even has a typical wire trunk squeal. Now here's the thousands digit. Well, fountain is a step. It wouldn't make a noise like that otherwise. Now the rest of the phone number. Aha! No selector noise on the hundreds digit. Instead, we just heard the typical wireline kata, which is just a device that improves the transmission of dial pulsing on wire trunks. But there was no selector noise. That means they're using a three-digit connector group here, and since the last digit of the number we're dialing is nine, it's not going to be a normal ring. Carolina Tell has a lot of these small step CDOs that have coded ringing. The last digit of the phone number determines which ring you get. Hellacious party lines that need coded ringing are pretty much over by the 1970s, and so you'll find that most people in this office have phone numbers ending in 1. Let's dial a phone number ending in 1. The last digit 1 means normal ringing on the ring side of the line. In these Carolina Telephone step CDOs, I believe the pattern is that 1, 2, 3, and 4 are single, double, triple, and quadruple ring on the ring side. And then the pattern repeats with 6, 7, 8, and 9 for the tip parties. 5 and 0 are unused as far as I know, but if you call them you get a single ring. In the Fountain office and Stantonsburg, where we visit later, the phone company could set up a two-party line by having one customer's phone number end in one and the other end in six. What would be interesting to see, though, is what they did if one of those two customers moved and needed to have his number intercepted. 
There's a question as to whether they could even do it. Theoretically, they could. However, the party who remained would be unable to receive calls any time his former line mate was having his number intercepted to the operator. In any event, let's quickly call a double and then a triple ringing number in Fountain. Now, some of these small step CDOs don't even have a vacant level on their incoming side. We'll see if Fountain does. We'll try something most likely to be vacant, like 0, 7490. Recording played twice and stopped. Sounds like it reset the incoming selector. Let me dial a zero again. Imagine it'll go back in. We're sorry. Yep. And as you may have noticed, that recording is from that other tape that we have been hearing in Vanceboro, Williamston, Hamilton, We're sorry. Windsor, We're sorry. and now Fountain. We're sorry. Now there's another standard tape that they're using. Same girl, different tape of her saying it, and that's the one on the two recordings here, and where we're about to call now, Greenville. Greenville has two NX1s, and one of them is the toll center for this area. It's where you go when you dial operator, 1+, plus, and also 8+, plus, which is how you make local calls to Greenville itself. First off, here's dialing 1, plus a three-digit code that goes to the Greenville recording, and you'll hear it's the same tape as the two recordings here. triggered by my flashing that short flash on these trunks, and it is coming from Greenville. Now, as Carolina Telephone likes to do, they combine multiple functions on the same trunk group in a way that is very kludgy and confusing. In this case, the two functions are long distance dialing, one plus, and zero dialing, just dialing zero to get the operator. There is no zero plus dialing in this area. For calls to the operator, zero, Farmville sends a one to Greenville. Meanwhile, for one plus calls, Farmville simply allows the customer to dial the number he wants right into the trunk, which means Greenville sees a first digit which is not a one, but rather a two through nine. Here I'm going to dial zero. You'll see that as soon as I connect to the trunk, there's a little flash, and that tells Greenville that this is an operator call. 
Six seconds after we connect to the trunk, you'll hear the Greenville NX-1 connecting to the operator board. Yes, can you tell me uh, what exchanges I can call locally here? What town are you calling from? Farmville. You can call Greenville. That's the only one you can call local. Fountain. Well, Fountain and Greenville. Anything else? That's all. What's the prefix in Fountain? 749. 749. And for Greenville, do I, uh, how do, I, do I just dial, dial the number? No, you dial 8 in front of the number. Oh, I dial 8 in front of the number. Right. But what about for Fountain? Do I do that? No, you just dial the Fountain number. So I call Fountain normally, and then for Greenville, I dial 8. That's right. Okay, thank you. Again, this reorder came on because I flashed. Normally, it just goes silent when the operator releases. For some reason, if you attempt to dial something after the zero, which of course to Greenville is a one, boy is this confusing, that causes Greenville to get the operator on the line in less than six seconds. And of course, since the OnePlus calls are using the same trunk group, we can also get the operator quickly by dialing one from here to get the trunk to Greenville, then another one to make Greenville think I really dialed zero, then two more digits which get the operator on the line faster. Aha! Uh -huh. No class of service tone. So that operator didn't know I was at a coin phone. What I should have demonstrated for the tape was asking her for assistance on a local call because she would have completed it without asking me to deposit a dime. Here's one plus a three-digit code, which triggers the typical toll restriction device to give us a busy signal. Here's one of those, what's wrong with this picture, questions. On the last call, we dialed one, plus a three-digit code, that started to act as if it was going through, and the toll restrictor kicked in and gave us a busy. That's what normally happens from one of these little steps when the long-distance trunk goes off-hook to ask for my phone number. It's that off-hook signal that triggers the toll restriction. And on the last call, we've seen that the toll restrictor is working just fine. However, on the previous call, we dialed one plus some digits that got us to the operator, and she was able to hold the line up. Now, the fact that she was able to hold us up suggests strongly that, of course, the trunk was off hook while she was on the line. Otherwise, how would Farmville know? And that's the normal way things are done on operator trunks. But we had dialed one to get that operator, and on a one trunk from a step like this, normally supervision triggers toll restriction. So that is a big seeming inconsistency. Now when I first narrated this tape in the late 1990s, I couldn't come up with an answer. I was thinking that it might be an inconsistency in the equipment or something. But when I ran this theory by Bill from New York, he actually came up with a plausible theory as to how this could have happened. And here it is. NX1s have a special protocol that they use in areas that have zero plus dialing. Greenville is not one such area. But because it is an NX-1, they could be using that weird protocol anyway. And that protocol is different from the normal CAMA protocol used on most of these OnePlus calls. In this alternate way of doing things, it's a flash of supervision, not a steady off-hook state, that says to the step, send the number you're calling, or trigger the toll restrictor. When an operator is actually on the line, a steady off-hook state is used to indicate that the customer's line should be held 
until it goes back on hook. So if they are using this alternate way of doing things, these OnePlus trunks send a flash to say it's time for toll restriction, or A&I, and they use Steady Off Hook to say there's an operator on the line, hold the customer. It just never occurred to me that Greenville, not having zero-plus dialing, would be using that rather complex supervision protocol for what is really just a simple camera function. But maybe NX1s just do it that way regardless. Let's try 1 plus 411, and I bet you the operator's going to hold us up because Carolina Telephone does like to do that. Assistance for City. May help you. Hello? Yup, she was able to hold the line, and the toll restrictor didn't kick in. Well, I guess I won't be playing directory assistance operator roulette this morning. Hello? Directory assistance. Directory assistance. But since Greenville is an NX1 toll center, there is some playing that can be done here. In spite of the fact that we've seen that the toll restrictor is working just fine, there is nonetheless something we can dial that's long distance that won't trigger it. And that is 1 plus a distant area code plus the code 411 and four more digits. This stems from the days when NX1s didn't ticket directory assistance. Now it does ticket directory assistance, 555-1212, but we can still dial 411 in a distant area code and have it not even ask for my phone number, and it'll go through to the toll network without so much as making an initial record. Here's 404 plus 411, which Greenville sends to Atlanta Directory Assistance. The trunk from Greenville back to Farmville didn't even flash, and that's why we're still here. It did not ask for my phone number. Had we dialed one plus any other potential long-distance call, it would have. I'm staying on the line to demonstrate something else that's cool about NX1 toll centers like Greenville. Notice how I haven't timed out, even though directory assistance has gone off hook and hung up. When you dial an area code plus 411, you never have to worry about being cut off. It's the full equivalent of a goodie tandem. Had I had a blue box with me, I could have called anywhere in the world and stayed on the trunk indefinitely. Now, 411 is not a valid code in the long distance network. It just happens to work in some places like Atlanta. Let's try that in New York. but we have a problem in completing your calls dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator to help you. This is a recording. 9199. We're sorry, but we... Well, that was the recording from the Rocky Mount 4A, complete with that ESS ring that isn't an ESS ring that the Rocky Mount Step has. Now, let's make some local calls to Greenville, which is done by dialing 8+. plus. Why 8+. plus? Well, Greenville didn't used to be local, and Carolina Telephone, when they add a local calling area after the dial service has been established, in a step, they like to use a prefix digit. That way, they don't have to re-engineer the step, and the customers, I think, are going to feel better about that extra couple of dollars on their phone bill each month, because now they can say, look, now you have EAS, Extended Area Service which in Carolina telephone areas is just another name for being able to call something beyond your own town. It's an amazing concept when you consider that right next door, there's another telephone company called the Norfolk and Carolina Telephone Company that has about 14 local offices that can all call each other. 
But here, you're lucky if you can call even one town that's not just your own. Anyway, shall we try E-A-S? First, let's dial 8, plus something that does go to that same Greenville recording. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number or try your call again. Now you can tell that these trunks are distinct from the combined one and zero trunks, and thank goodness for that. I'd hate to try to figure out an even more confusing trunking scheme by Carolina Telephone. They are all T carrier, both trunk groups, but you can tell the EAS. 8 plus trunks are distinct by the fact that they let you hear the NX1 pulsing sounds. Here's connecting to the recording on the EAS trunk. And here's what it sounded like when we did it on the 1 plus trunk. The pulsing does happen there too, but those trunks don't let you hear it. Now when we dial 8 plus a working number in Greenville, we'll hear even more pulsing. I don't know why the Greenville time has double ring. Pepsi Cola backs the ECU Pirates. Do you? Time 8, 9. Temperature 54. While we're here, let me mention something about the independent T-carrier, which actually has a different sound than the Bell System T-carrier. The T-carrier that I was finding in independence during the 1970s very often had this thing that it did whenever there was a loud click, and you could hear it on that last call. Notice how it sort of rings along with the... Uh, Yeah, see, the loud click makes it go gnging, like that. And I never heard that ringing effect in the bell system, although the whine itself is still heard in some places today. So back to Greenville. On the EAS trunks, there are a number of operator service codes that work. 8 plus 411 and 8 plus 611 do work, and in fact, that's the official way to call them. But from a coin phone, 8 plus 411 is not going to work because it goes off hook and you'd have to deposit 20 cents to talk to the operator. Surprisingly, 8 plus 0 works. There was no class of service tone there, but she would have found out quickly enough that I was at a coin phone because I would have had to deposit 20 cents to talk to her. That's another Vanceboro type situation. And she can hold me up. Now that might mean that any subscriber you call in Greenville could hold you up. Given what we just saw, they'd have to go out of their way to make that not possible. 8 plus 611 for repair service works just fine from a coin phone but that's because repair service does not go off hook. In this case, they've actually sacrificed the ability to hold the customer up in order to make it free from coin phones. Telephone repair service, may I have the number you're recording, please? In the main Greenville NX1, the code 110 goes to operator intercept. You can actually get into that here, 
probably by dialing 110, but I stumbled upon it here by dialing 8 plus 10, and then I dialed another digit 1 that wasn't necessary. Now the fun part of this Farmville phone trip is what I've saved for last here, and that's calling the secondary Greenville NX1, the Hooker Road Central Office, 756. That was the only code at the time. Since the 8 plus trunks go into the main Greenville NX1, it's got to turn around and MF to the Hooker Road NX1, and those trunks happen to be seven digits right now, so we get to hear seven digits of MF as we call over to Hooker Road. Here's 8 plus 756 2368. The reason those are seven digit rather than five digit trunks, by the way, or even four digit trunks, is because there's this tributary called Aden 746, which the main Greenville NX1 uses Hooker Road to get to for some reason. And if you listen to the 1974 recording from Greenville, you'll hear that 746 is going through 756. And with both codes ending in six, they thought it was easier to just make it seven digits. That did get changed, I think, in 1978. The main NX-1 in Greenville began going directly to Aden, and the 756 trunks went to only five digits, which wasn't as fun because not only did you hear fewer tones when you called it, but you couldn't flash it off and send any local number through it, as I demonstrated in 1974. But they're still doing it the old way here, so let's hear another seven-digit number, 756-9999. From the main Greenville NX1, you can squeeze in extra digits at the end of a 756 number, and they get MF'd. Let's see if that works here. 756-2222-111. Nope, my extra digits were ignored. Another cool thing you can do from the main NX1 is just when the number is about to be MF'd to the 756 office, you do a flash and the sender drops out and you're sitting there on the trunk with nothing sent. Sometimes the actual flash from 756 will be audible. And if you just sit there, it will time out to a reorder. If you had a portable device, you could actually send another number into the trunk. Well, let's see if that works here. I'm going to dial a 756 number, and right before the main Greenville NX1 is about to MF the number, I'll flash. If this works, there will be a long pause, and then finally the reorder from 756 will come on. That worked exactly as intended, but here's a recording of my trying to do the same thing and getting a very unexpected result.
supposed to dial 8 first for Greenville. One NX1 had 752 and 758, the other has 756. The 8 trunks go into the 752 and 8 machine. And when I dial 756 into the 8 trunks, it's supposed to MF 7 digits into the 756 machine. If I flash just as it's about to send, it dial pulses into MF trunks. And of course nothing happens. Let me demonstrate this again. By the way, it dialed out eight digits. The number I dialed plus a one, indicating that my flash was taken at some level by the main NX1 as a one. So digit squeezing worked in this case. The reason we end up getting a reorder is that the trunks from the main NX1 to Hooker Road are MF trunks and dial pulsing is simply ignored. Now as strange as that was, what follows, again with the same basic conditions, is even stranger. That's right, we are currently getting a reorder from both offices. That was even better than what I had in mind. Let me try it again. The 756 reorder eventually disappeared, either because it timed out in some way, or the main NX-1 cut me off the trunk. Boy, are NX-1s weird. Well, that's everything interesting that I recorded from Farmville. What's next is a smaller place, Stantonsburg. It has a small step office. Actually, it's very like Fountain, 749 that we were calling from here. So we'll get to hear one of those close up. That's next.